Flight Simulator 2004 a classic, a real renaissance simulator, one of the greatest ever made and you know it's still my main driver to this day. One of many reasons it was able to stick around for so long even after the release of Flight Simulator X and looks so good compared to previous installments of the series was due to the comprehensive upgrades made to the weather system. More specifically, clouds. Now, Flight Sim 2004's weather simulation is very dated as compared to today's flight sims, but frankly, I don't like that comparison. When Flight Simulator 2004 came out two decades ago now, computers looked more like this, ran more like this, and frequently would bully 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 would and one of the main goals of the development team was avoiding the latter two of those issues as much as possible and it was much more of a formidable challenge than it sounds graphics cards cpus operating systems much of that stuff is more or less homogenized today Chances are, if you buy a name brand graphics card that's even as much as 10 years old, it'll be capable of running lots of games with no visual glitches, without crashing, and with playable performance. In the year 2003, almost the exact opposite was true. Windows 98, Me, 2000, and XP were all still in widespread use, all of which were very different operating systems running different hardware in different ways. And even when using name brand cards and chips, it was still possible to have problems because graphics technology was all over the place back then. And what's more, the word driver meant a person who drives a vehicle to most people at the time. And even if you got lucky enough to avoid artifacting or crashing and knew what you were doing with a computer, your performance when running Flight Sim with all the settings maxed out was probably a crapshoot because Flight Simulator has always and forever been one of the most resource taxing computer games available to the public, especially if you liked using complex add-on aircraft. Also by the year 2003, the sprite-based cloud and weather engine used in Flight Simulator for many years up to that point had aged rather poorly, despite being tweaked and updated with every successive version released. Flying through dynamic weather situations just didn't have the visual appeal or gravitas that it arguably should have. The developers behind Flight Sim were aware of these issues, and they were working on a solution that would ultimately be used, basically unchanged, for almost two decades over several versions of Flight Sim. For this video, most of my information on these systems comes from one of the developers who worked on Flight Simulator Sky and Weather Model by the name of Ninian Wong. Back in the day, she made a couple of videos and gave several presentations on the subject, which are still available on her website. The video she created is available on YouTube today and was featured on Microsoft's official website for Flight Simulator after FS 2004 was officially announced. Links in the description. Let's start with clouds. In Flight Simulator 2004, there are two methods of rendering clouds. The first method generates the 3D clouds that you can fly through, which are an assemblage of 2D sprites that are semi-randomly arranged inside of dozens of individual 3D boxes. These boxes represent where each sprite will render, and each assembly was handcrafted and shaped to represent numerous varieties of clouds. The sprites are strictly 2D, hence their name, and always face the camera, which is the main secret to how the development team was able to get such complex shapes that render even on low-end systems. It's also the reason that flying directly under or over a cloud produces circular artifacting as the sprite turns 180 degrees to continually face the camera. All detailed 3D clouds in Flight Sim use a singular texture sheet called Cumulus01.bitmap in the Flight Simulator texture folder. This texture contains 16 sprites that make up every single cloud you see in Flight Simulator except for cirrus clouds, which are represented by individual textures and appear as simple 2D repeating textures in the Flight Sim world. Cirrus clouds do not face the camera and have no depth. Going back to the texture sheet, stratus clouds, puffy cumulus clouds, and random wispy cloud bits each have their own spot on the texture sheet. This particular texture at the top right of the sheet is used to render the bottoms of cumulus clouds, which is why it becomes much darker in color towards the bottom. 
The main part of the sheet here is essentially the actual texture for the clouds, where colors and form can be visually changed, while the alpha or transparency channel up here is what controls the shape of the sprites that are rendered in Flight Simulator. The alpha channel ranges from perfect black to perfect white and is entirely grayscale. The wider a pixel is on the alpha channel, the more opaque it is in the flight simulator and vice versa. Imposter clouds, on the other hand, do not actually have 3D form. Instead, they are 2D shapes based on the actual 3D clouds rendered onto an octagonal ring that surrounds the user aircraft like a massive cloud-themed billboard. As the user aircraft moves through a cloudy environment, imposter clouds transition into 3D clouds when passing through this ring. The size of the ring is controlled by this setting slider here, 3D cloud percentage. The lower the slider, the lower the distance from the aircraft that 3D clouds become imposters. The most notable disadvantage of the imposter clouds is obvious from the downgrade of visual quality. The resolution of imposters is much lower than the rest of the clouds and end up with silver lined edges as a result of downscaling the alpha channel. And because the clouds are plastered onto a ring that's always centered on the aircraft, they don't move in 3D space properly, causing completely weird looking parallax with very low 3D cloud percentage settings. Despite their disadvantages, imposter clouds were very important for adequate performance with the best visual quality on older hardware, as demonstrated by this graph with frame per second performance on the y-axis and various cloud cover scenarios on the x-axis, showing the massive performance gains some computers experienced with imposter clouds versus without them. Throughout development, the team had a goal of maintaining at least 15 frames per second on the most limiting hardware tested, a 733 MHz CPU. The way light from the sun interacts with the clouds is controlled in the simulator by the sky textures. In Flight Simulator 2004, 140 32 pixel by 32 pixel bitmaps control all of the lighting and sky colors that you see. The sky textures themselves and the way the sky box works is worthy of its own video, so I won't get into what all these textures are actually doing too much. The uppermost row of pixels on these sheets is responsible for the color of highlights and shadows on all objects and clouds in the simulation. These two pixels control light and shadow colors on all objects except clouds, while these two are exclusively used for clouds. The way this lighting is applied is quite basic, and its final appearance can be hit or miss. The developer notes state that using a light scattering system to simulate proper depth and shadows was too taxing for hardware of the time, and so the clouds are lit via simply highlighting the sprites facing towards the sun with the highlighting pixel color, and shading the sprites facing away from the sun with the shading pixel color. The visual result is fairly decent, with the upside of being highly customizable. If you were to switch to simple clouds in the display menu, the result is more similar to the old methods of rendering weather used in older versions of Flight Simulator, with simple individual sprites used for clouds. However, even this method of weather generation was changed in Flight Sim 2004. In Flight Sim 2002, for example, setting an overcast layer causes a single large texture to be displayed at the top and bottom of the cloud layer, and flying through it causes visibility to drop to zero rapidly to simulate flying through the clouds. In Flight Simulator 2004, overcast layers with simple clouds enabled is arguably not as interesting. Cloud sprites are spread out far and wide and the visibility doesn't change, which means flying through an overcast layer with simple clouds enabled is rather underwhelming compared to Flight Sim 2002. Also different in Flight Simulator 2004, there's another texture sheet used for simple clouds called Cumulus02.bitmap and it works just like Cumulus01. In FS2002, there is a large group of texture files beginning with CLD for cloud that are used for generating clouds. Interestingly, these textures are also included in Flight Sim 2004, even though they're never actually used. If you were to select rain or snow, you'll get some rather convincing rain and snow effects, for the time of course. These effects are controlled by a set of eight textures, four for rain and four for snow. These textures work just like the cloud textures, with this area being the color of the rain or snow, and the alpha channel being used to control how the texture actually renders. Rain and snow textures are rendered onto a double-pointed cone, with one point facing into the precipitation and the other away from where the precipitation is falling from. 
When the aircraft is stopped, the cones are aligned vertically with the aircraft and the precipitation appears to fall straight down. Above a certain speed, the cone begins to tilt forward to simulate the velocity of the aircraft through the air. All four of the rain or snow textures are used at the same time, stretched or compressed on the cones to simulate heavier or lighter precipitation, and sliding across the cones at different speed to simulate parallax. This system for rain and snow is not perfect. For example, wind speed has no effect on the tilt angle or direction of the cones, meaning that wind essentially has no effect on the visual appearance of rain or snow. However, I think the worst point of this system is that the cone does not tilt forward gradually with aircraft velocity, but instead snaps from fully vertical to tilted at a certain speed that changes from aircraft to aircraft. In many cases, the approach or takeoff speeds of the aircraft and flight sim are not high enough to cause the precipitation cones to tilt, causing the rain and snow to fall straight vertically despite traveling forward a couple hundred miles an hour through the air. Oh yeah, lightning. This one is quick and easy. Lightning is controlled by these effect files in the Flight Simulator Effects folder that use these two textures to generate the lightning strike itself and the flash of light that illuminates the clouds. The lightning is generated at the height of the thunderstorm cloud base so that the flash will always appear underneath the cloud sprites and thus be visible without artifacting. The effects also cause a bright white flash to illuminate objects in the scene, with the source being the direction of the lightning strike. The sounds of thunder used in Flight Simulator do not correlate directly with the actual lightning you see, and are instead played at random, with a different set of sounds for being inside or outside the aircraft. With all of these systems, the weather visuals in Flight Simulator 2004 are generally leaps and bounds ahead of Flight Sim 2002 and other previous flight simulators. However, sometimes I really enjoy going back to the simpler methods of weather generation employed by Flight Sim 2002 and other older simulators, such as using the singular texture to render an overcast layer, which to this day still looks pretty good, in my opinion of course. The weather model itself that determines when and how clouds form, temperatures and lots of other stuff was pretty heavily upgraded as well, but that's a fairly dense topic for this video which is already a little longer than I expected, where I just wanted to cover the simple but effective methods used to render relatively complex weather scenarios. Looking back, it is really impressive how good the weather can look in Flight Sim 2004, especially with some texture upgrades. And aside from some relatively minor changes, this system was basically used completely unchanged in every version of Flight Sim released except Microsoft Flight, but we won't talk about that here. Up until Flight Sim 2020, including every version of Prepared released by Lockheed Martin. All right, that's enough on Flight Simulator 2004 weather for now. Thanks for watching. This video is a little different from ones I've done in the past thus far, but I really enjoyed making it. I love learning about the more technical aspects of the flight sim, and I have lots more videos like this one planned for the future. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more, feel free to check out the other videos I have on the channel. I've got several of them up now. And also, feel free to support me on Patreon so I can keep making these videos and still afford to eat real food. Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned.